Well, good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us for another show here. We've got Air Power with myself, Rick Utzler, and my buddy Cecil. How are you doing, Cecil? Hey, how's it going? Yeah, it's good. It's good, all right, yeah, Cecil. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cecil, what's on your mind tonight? Well, uh, tonight, actually, I was out uh, playing with some of those new H&N pellets this morning, and Which that ones was are really those? interesting. The H and N pile driver and the sniper magnums. Okay, what were you? Sh what gun were you shooting? I was shooting the AT forty four long QE. Okay, and uh, I was running it with an Alteros uh, regulator in it. All right, and uh, it was uh, my my extreme spread was like four feet per second with that regulator <laughs> in there. So I got <laughs> some good that. got some really good numbers. So uh, I was really impressed with what what they did and. Uh, and the well, well how, far, how far were you shooting tonight? 50 yards. Okay. And you're shooting that. Now, I don't know if the guys know what the pile driver is. Why don't you describe that pellet for us? Because that's a brand new one that yeah. should be coming over from H&M. Yeah, it's a 30 grain boat tail. Um, it looks like an Ikea <laughs> pin that holds a drawer up. <laughs> you know, but it sort of does, actually. It, it really does. and But uh, it works well. And how it groups well. It it's it's good out to about 50 yards. I think it's a little bit heavy for going out beyond that. What did you get for at 50 yards with your AT44? Well, I was getting right out about an inch. Okay, well, um, that's respectable. You get yeah. better than that with, like, your regular Diablo pellets, though, right? Yeah, with the Diablo. Oh, naturally, you will. But, I mean, you're talking, you know, uh, 15 eights, yeah. um, something like that. It, not nearly as much weight. 30 grains. Ouch. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a lot of weight to be pushing. Oh, it's a lot. Well, that must be why they call it the pile driver. Yeah, I guess so. The Sniper Magnum is an 18-grain pellet, and uh, I was shooting out at 100 yards. I was shooting three-inch groups at 100 yards, but with an AT-44 pushing them at, um, what was it? I think it was 30 foot-pounds at the muzzle. Okay. And That's not hitting, a lot, though. No. Hitting at 100 yards. Mm -hmm. and I mean, it was the wind wasn't very bad this morning, but uh, I was I, like I said, I was quite impressed with both of them. Cool. Now, for you guys that are interested in these new pellets – we got real fortunate as we were leaving shot. And I think what we're going to talk about today is actually our experience at shot show. Right. But as we were leaving the very last day, we walked by H and N booth. We, I'd been trying to find the place. I remember one day Cecil says, let's go see H and N. And then he walks me around the <laughs> entire, it's like, it's another one of those forced March. And I know the son of a gun's chuckling the entire time. He walks my fat butt around that whole place. We couldn't find it. Well, I'd already been by and talked to him, but yeah, you, yeah. So he'd been there. <laughs> And he's an Army scout, and we couldn't find it, quote-unquote. Yeah, he was just marching me around the whole facility is what he was doing. But besides the point... He was trying to help you lose weight, Ricky. Honey, honey, no. Just, <laughs> who gave her a mic? Uh, that would be me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you guys can't hear her <laughs> chuckling over there because she turned it Well, on. actually, he was trying to help me lose <laughs> weight, too. <laughs> and we were all wandering around trying to find H&N. But we did find it on the last day. We're walking by the yes, booth. They're packing the last everything minute. Up. Yep. They're packing everything up. And, and they recognized me. And I had never met them. But they knew who I was. And Cecil had already met them. We're talking. And they hand me this tin of Grizzlies. I said, heck, man, if you're giving pellets away. Yeah. They said, here, take the whole box. I'm like, psh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, then every single pellet that they had there, they gave to us. Yeah, was that um, or just having to ship them back to right. Germany. So. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it was just one tin of each kind, yeah. but we got to uh, take them. Yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> and then what? I uh, got to talk with those guys a little bit later, and they actually sent me a care package all the way from Germany. So, you know, you've got those pile drivers and the sniper magnums you could be working with and the twenty two cal. And the the pellet I'm really interested in to try, and I'm going to try it in, the, in my um, air arms. Yeah, and that the, ultimate sporter. Yeah, I'm going to try the 25 cal grizzly. Yes, those are some mean looking pellets. Now I've shot some of those just here in the studio into some goo. You know, just <laughs> just to that's like, the technical you know, term goo. Yeah, because it's not ballistics gel. We just call it goo, <laughs> and and it it's pretty radical. I mean, it opens wide open and big and huge. It doubles in size and makes big cavities. It's I'm, I don't know if it's accurate. I'm just shooting here, you know, ten feet, but. And your excuse was you were trying to make flowers for Sue for no, I was for well. You know what? I was cleaning Day. up the shop <laughs> in a frantic make flowers. Well, yeah, lead ones. You know, with the hollow point all <laughs> spread out, the petals. Buy flowers, Cecil. <laughs> Jeez. You know, there's a reason I married you on Valentine's Day, honey. Yes, so that you never had to remember our anniversary. Is to yes, we're killing two birds with one stone with that. So anyway, so <clears throat> what was I talking about? We were talking about you were looking around the shop. Yeah, like oh yes, in a mad rat, mad rash, mad rush. Excuse me, 
mad rush to get ready for the show this evening and i'm finding pieces of clay every, <laughs> everywhere from our last show where we were shooting those all right so today we're going to talk about shot show there was so much to see there that there, there is no way even in four days that you're in the convention center that you can see everything <clears throat> We, there was so much that we wanted to see, we wanted to get pictures of, video of, that we just weren't able to yeah. because there's not enough hours in the day. Yeah, if you want to sort of get a, a stay up to date on what we did get a chance to look at, I've been posting videos, I guess, on average every couple of days for Airgun Depot because yes. they sponsored our trip. And so I've still got, I don't know, probably a dozen or so more videos to still even edit and get ready to post. And I've got three little videos should be going up this week. Um, a couple will be uh, like air arms. I've got some from Hot Sun. I've got some from. I've got a bunch from Umarex. I still have a ton more from Gamma. I mean, there's just so many different things that uh, we got to take. Uh, got to take the time to see. And gosh, excuse me. Uh, go up to AirGunDepot.com. Uh, they should be having. They should have that on their uh, their YouTube page. I'm going to be posting on my YouTube page, which is YouTube.com/AirGunWeb. So you guys have probably been able to keep up with that, but it's a lot, it's, it's a lot of fun. You can see what we saw and we got, we, we posted a bunch of stuff on Facebook too. So there's a bunch oh, of yeah. stuff up there that, um, from our trip to shot, but we just looked at a, just a fraction of what there was for air guns. Forget about everything else. It yes. was just gargantuan. Well, and then one of the things that you already posted the video for that was really interesting and I think is, is going to touch the, you know, the firearms crowd. It's going to touch the, the air gunners and really be exciting is the introduction of Six Hour, real, real serious introduction of their products into the air gun market. They had some very interesting toys that they yes, had there. Yes, they did. What was it, like the MCX, I believe? I don't yeah. remember the name of the. Yeah, rifles. I think it was it like just, the MCX. It looked like the M- really cool one yeah. and really cool two. So yes, that, exactly. That's how they, I remember it. They were they were uh, uh, AR platform. Um, they came with they come the from the factory with a thirty round belt in it. Um, it fits in the magazine. And it, right. It's a belt, but it thirty rounds. Um, so it's a realistic magazine capacity. Um, and they come in CO2 or pre-charged pneumatic. Correct. Um, the CO2s are going to come out first. The pre-charged pneumatics are going to come later. Um, they also have the... No, let's back up just for a minute because uh, we're talking a semi-automatic assault rifle type platform. Yes, and one-to-one one, weight. Yes, and that was important because if you like shooting your your, your AR yep. or your M4 variant or whatever it is, mm-hmm. AR, M4. Black so, rifle. Yeah, was, yeah. Black <laughs> rifle, what they're calling it now. Um, if you like shooting that but you don't want to you know, drop the dime on 223 or... If you have like, there was a whole bunch. There was a time there were they're still out, but there was a lot of twenty-two long rifle variants of those. Yes, and you guys know twenty-two long rifles. One, it's harder to find, and it's you know it's not three cents around anymore. It's now ten or twelve cents around. Yeah, which is eighteen cents. Really ridiculous, and usually those guns require the high test twenty-two. The, the cheap stuff didn't. Where I have an, a GSG five twenty two or whatever it is. Right. Um, and it will not run the cheap stuff. You gotta find the CCI stingers or something more. Yeah, it cycle. just won't cycle, yeah. So this yeah. gives you that ability to have that sort of assault rifle, multi shot, semi automatic, but in an air gun. Yes. A quality air gun. Yes, definitely quality from the feel of what we you know yeah. we haven't got a chance to shoot them yet, but um the uh the quality that we got to see in the action and everything it, Yeah, SIG I SIG isn't known for making non-quality products no and this uh, this is not something they're outsourcing from what i saw i mean these are things they're building themselves i might be wrong on that but i mean if i remember correctly even on my conversations they're, they're building these things yes they're building the, from what they were saying they're building these things and they were built off the plans for the the actual firearms that they're designed after right and that that's very very cool one-to-one metal you know they're mechanically actuated they're not electric they're not like a hybrid airsoft sort of no these are mechanical blowback actuated exactly 30 round mag they actually designed them um don't mean to interrupt you but they they, uh they they actually designed them to use in their training facility right um and they like i said they also have the the pistols the p226 or in the uh, P three zero or something like that. I, don't, I, don't I, I, the, like I may I be said, off on was, the numbers. It was cool one and cool two. I, yeah, exactly. As far as but I they know. have they have both the CO two vari- versions of their pistols and the CO two and 
uh, PCP versions of uh, the, the, the rifle. The rifle. Right. And so you can train with both of them. Yeah. Just like the ones that, you know, a lot of people own. I was actually talking to a gun store owner and they commented, I mentioned that pistol and there's, she's, she was saying, wow, that's the gun that my husband carries. Right. And I'm like, well, you really need to look into this because that's economical training aid right there. Right. I've got a, a 226 Airsoft. I love it. Yeah. Oh, is it Airsoft or is it BB? I might have a BB one. Mm. I mean, it's not, well, a, see, it's, it's a SIG licensed. It's not yes. made by them, but it, it breaks down like, you know, similar to the real thing. It has good weight. And, and it was a, is a great tool for that training aspect because it's, if it, it may not be identical, but it's extremely similar to a carry weapon. And granted, yes. you want to train with what you use. I exactly. mean, as much as you can. Well, yeah, you want the safety to be in the same spot. You want the, the magazine to release to be in the same spot so that when you do actually use it, you're not fumbling for it in the wrong spot. Right. You want muscle memory to be similar. Exactly. Now, I mean, ideally, the more you can train with the actual live rounds, and that, oh, that's great. But, you know, unless you have unlimited resources and can take a lot of time off work, right. you know, the ability to kind of do this in your backyard, some basic training and, and uh, proficiency to maintain your proficiency, then that... Now, that makes a lot of sense to have that capability. So Yes, it definitely does. Anyway, so the SIG guns look really cool. On the PCP rifle side, what really got my attention is going to 25 caliber. Yes, 25 caliber. In a PCP. In a PCP semi black rifle. Semi-automatic. And it comes with a 30-round belt, but you can buy bigger ones. Yeah, 50 and 70. Yes, so 70, 25 caliber. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how they're going to work the air on that. I mean, 25 cal, semi-automatic. Can you, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I guess it, we'll just hey, have to see. I mean, you know? it's I mean, sick though. So, I mean, they're going to put quality out there, I would think. So I'm, I'm, I'm just very interested how, to see that. How big is that air tank? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you know, we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. We haven't seen what it's really going to look like or, or what it's going to be. So we'll see. Hopefully it'll be as awesome as I would imagine it to be. So we spent a lot of time over at the Beeman Marksman booth. And I know that's not a gun we talk about a lot. No, it isn't. And honestly, we weren't even really looking for them at the time. They were actually later on our list of things to do, but we saw something as we were walking by that just caught our eye. Yeah, there was, they actually had a lot of neat guns. I don't know how, how realistic they're going to be, but I'm excited to yes. see how they're going to turn out. I mean, they've got a, a double barrel air gun. I kid you not. It's a yes. double barrel air gun. It's got an adjustable transfer port. So you cock, it's a spring gun, you cock it, and you load both your pellets in. Now, it comes... The ones they had there were 177 and 22. I don't know how that's going to work with the sh shift in the point of impact and whatnot, but I don't know. I mean, it's it's an interesting concept. I yes. Mean, but you have both barrels, and you load your pellet, and then on the transfer port, you switch it to 177 and shoot, cock it again, switch it to 22 and shoot. Or if you want to go crazy, you cock it. You, there's, a, there's an option to shoot both barrels at the same time. Yes, exactly. I, it's bizarre, but I, I'm willing to try it. It looks – and the new stock they put it in is very um, sort of tactical. Yeah, M14-ish or uh, – I, I don't know. It's like a – it's a, a mix between like an M14, SKS. Uh, it's it's pretty it, crazy. It, it, the big news for me with the Beeman was their theoretical potential. Yet jump, to be named. Yet, yet to be named jump into the big bore market. With a 40 cal big board. It's based off the QB78. Yeah. So it, they took a it, QB78, beefed up the cylinder, yep. put a 40 cal barrel on it. Like a five foot 40 cal <laughs> barrel. But the thing is almost as tall as I was. But and I'm sure the production model, if they do actually produce, it'll be a little shorter. But yeah, it, asked, looked, like a, it looked like a brown best musket almost. It looked pretty cool. I mean, it was very simplistic. And Oh, with, yeah. With as much as we've seen out there of these of some of these guns that are you know really sort of you know big fancy and huge and I like big fancy and huge I mean I'm a huge fan of the Evanex guns primarily because they look so doggone cool and most of them shoot pretty good too yes but this one was very very minimalistic it's sort of like the way the Disco was when it first came into the market on the PCP side this is like that stripped down down and dirty functional big board PCP that's probably going to be extremely affordable. Yes. Well, and they they had numbers that are showing that it was shooting close to 300 foot pounds. Yeah. Well, this was no joke. Yeah, no, it, it's it, it's pretty serious. I mean, I don't think you're going to get more than three shots at that. With I the, don't know. It, What they had there, 
you know, maybe they're going to put a bigger tube on it or something, but, uh, you know, time will tell what they actually come out with. I was encouraging them strongly to please build that gun. Yes. It, it was a very interesting platform, that's for sure. It's built on the QB78, right? Yes. So how much is already out there for the QB78 platform in stocks and valves? Not, I mean, not that the valves would be necessarily applicable, but, I mean, their people are tooled up to build stuff for the QB78 line. Oh, definitely. So, I mean, you, <clears throat> stock, like you said, stocks and and everything it wouldn't be hard to just make the modification to handle a larger caliber in fact you're working with a group that is developing a uh, multi-shot breach yes b and m customs yeah. yes so when those guys get their breach out and if they do come out with a big bore then yeah you could have a repeating big bore and then they build shrouds so now you could sh shroud the dog on things so yes it just it, keeps getting better and better it does kind of it does and that that's it's a uh, platform that's been around for a while like you said so it's something that it's easy to to tool up to yeah they're not re reinventing this. the wheel with no. that one they're just adding more capacity and putting a bigger barrel on it yep. and i was talking to jim chapman and he was saying years ago he had a custom qb78 modified to shoot 357 so the concept of taking a qb78 and doing this to it is not new this is not like oh the light bulb i mean this is yeah, this is be this would be done. them actually doing it versus it being done by a third party. So, right. but it did catch my attention. It had these big cast bullets that looked really cool. <laughs> yeah, it did. It did. <laughs> of all the stuff you saw, what kind of got your attention? Maybe more so than anything. Okay, the the one thing that really stood out, um, and and it, it most people wouldn't really think it so much, but it would be the um, the Gletcher guns. <sighs> The uh, Mosin Agant replica. Yep. It's the, We've uh, got one right here behind you. Not that you guys could see that on radio. The but. <laughs> M 1891. Yep. It's a chopped off, cut off Mosin Agant. I think they even have That's it in probably loaded. Call of Duty. <laughs> just so you know. Yeah, well, you know, that'd probably be important. To yeah, just to know. I mean, work this thing, but yes. if you everything shoot it, is loaded. If you shoot it, go <laughs> the, yeah. the trap's right to your left there. <laughs> Don't shoot Sue in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'd yeah, want to thanks, do that. Yeah, there we that. go. We'll take the CO2 out. Let's be safe. We're good. All right. But, no, it's it's a bolt action. And See, the, so uh, that's my gun. You know, my wife is like all the cool guns. She's yeah. like Bogart in a well, I can't help it that they're cool guns. <laughs> it's a really cool gun. If well, you if you like a bolt action rifle, and if you're like, if you've ever shot a Mauser, or, you know, one of these historic World War One you know, bolt action, serious sort of, then you're going to get it. You're yes. going to pick this up and go, oh, yeah. I, yeah. I, oh, yeah, I like this. Well, and it's 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 one-to-one -one weight again. Yep. I think that's kind of the trend now is there people Replica. that are using replicas, one-to-one yep. -one weight, and not this, you know, super light, doesn't weigh anything like it, and the magazine pops out. Um, it's the, nice. the feeding system for the BBs, and it is a BB pistol or rifle. I don't know what it's would you call it, something. assault. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Replica. It's a bolt action, BB replica. <laughs> bolt action, sawed off, Nagant replica. Yes, it, it, but like one thing you pointed out when you first got it into the studio was that it, the bolt actually pulls out like a bolt would on the actual right. rifle. You pull the trigger and Slides pull right the out. bolt right out. Um, and the bolt weighs the same as the real bolt it, on a real a, Mosin yeah, Nagant. It's a, it's a, it's, I actually got the, the details from them because I'm writing an article for Ergon Depot on this rifle, pistol, whatever it is. And it's a it's a heavy alloy. I mean, it's not stainless steel like I thought, but it's it's an actual alloy. It's not just pure cast. It's it's nice. I mean, it, yeah, it, it feels like you're holding something that's significant. Yes, uh, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, and they, the price reflects it. I think it's about one hundred and sixty, one hundred and sixty five dollars retail. But if if you want something that's really quality, that's a piece of history. That's yes, really cool. I mean, <laughs> it it is totally. It, it's all that and yeah. and a lot more. I, it's it's worth. Yeah, I mean, if you're into replica guns or historical guns, and I think that that's something that you really would want to take a look at. We had a couple questions. Sue, what was that first question? Um, any new brake barrels to keep an eye on, specifically Magnum brake barrels? Yes. Yes. There's several. Well, one of them, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the ones we talked about was the uh, the one there at Beeman. They've got a couple brake barrels that are coming out yes they do. uh stoger's got one that's coming out that's pretty cool they've kind of simplified their x30 or their 30 whatever it is not x it's it is it's the, the x30 yeah it, it, it's the they x, have the the 20 right and then the 50 
Yep. And they've they've made a thirty. Okay, that's, that's okay. What so it was. the twenty and the fifty. The fifty is like the super magnum. The twenty is the regular magnum. And then there's the S twenty or the twenty S. Man, there's too many letters and numbers yeah, and all that. A, anyway, the point is, is that what they've done is they've taken the rifle. They've taken the. They found that people were not using the open sight. So why put them on there? And they just bundled a scope with it and and kind of made a nice tactical looking stock. And so they've got right. that coming out. Uh, we'll see how that does. They put a gas ram in it, I believe. So they're they're moving toward in that direction. Yeah, they're starting that way. Yep. Hot Slime's going to have some very cool stuff. Now we saw some stuff in the back room, and if you're into the Magnum Springers or your Magnum Brake Barrels, then this is probably what you want to know about. Yeah, well, and then they're moving their QE line into their Springers, which is really nice. Gamo's got their new Pig Pig Hunter, uh, or Pig yeah. Killer, or what is it called? The uh, Pig Pig Man, Pig Man. Uh, so yeah, really, Gamo Pigman. I would have if I had been like had the opportunity to vote, that yes. would have been vetoed. I just yeah, well, may, maybe it, that's it's, like it's a, named after Pigman from the Outdoor Channel. Well, or I got that Sportsman's Channel. Yeah, but I just what kind of rifle you have? I have a Pigman. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't know. I just to me, I just I don't know, this is gonna pig man. I mean, I'd have to like mumble. Maybe, that maybe if my you're breath. from Arkansas or something, I don't know. I don't, I don't know the guy. Yeah, I mean, he's probably so. like awesome, and yeah. I'm just like you know. You know, I'm not worthy or something. I'm jealous. I, I, don't, yeah. I just, I want a rifle named after me. Hey, Be the go. fat man. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yep. 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 <laughs> so that would, anyway, so we'd have, no, so there's the pig man. Now, cool with that gun, it's going to have their new Mach 1 gas ram. It'll have their their new rail that's supposed to help with the recoil. The recoil reducing rail, the and new it, version. Yep. And it's going to have their new trigger, which is fully adjustable. First and second stage is fully adjustable on Independently, that yes. All right, so we've talked about SIG, we've talked a little bit about Beeman, Evanex, and we learned yes how, how to pronounce do you it. pronounce? How do you pronounce it? Is it Evanex? Is it Evonix? What it's, is the answer? And Mr. Lisa, he said Evanex. Evanex. That's what it is. There we we know now for sure. So it's Evanex. We have Mr. Lee on camera educating us that it's Evanex. We have it settled once and for all. Yes, finally. And they have a new gun coming out. Yes. Well, Pol they have. A, yeah called the rex the rex well yes. a new platform new platform yes it, it's more of an assault rifle pistol type. imagine this imagine this it's like maybe like the perfect survivalist air gun yes i could okay. see that, that now is, remember yes. the old um what's the name of that gun you're gonna know this cecil um it was that 22 long rifle that broke down everything went in the stock oh yeah i can't remember the name of that one you, but you guys i know, know what you're talking you know what I'm about, about. Yeah. Okay, so this rifle breaks down into uh, the, the, the whole you know, rear of the gun is the tank. Yes. It's all in a straight line, sort of like some other guns. Almost like an old grease gun almost. You yeah, know? it's kind of that really, look, really simple. Real basic, real um, industrial kind of look to it. And it's very simplistic. It's got, yes. a, it's got a single shot. It's the, the trigger guard is actually the cocking lever. Yes. So you pull down on that. It opens up the breech, put your pellet or bullet or whatever it is, because it'll come all the way up into 50 cal. Wow. In, yeah, what, two shots maybe? Yeah. <laughs> in, in the big one. But the full-size rifle will come in 50 cal, and then they're going to have a carbine, which would probably be good up to like 30, uh, you know, 35. And then they're going to have a pistol. Yes. The pistol version is going to top out at like 35. Yeah, they, uh, yeah, thirty five is what he was saying. Yeah. So or three five seven, three five seven, yeah. yeah. But uh, that's that's a one shot deal right there well, with yeah, the pistol. Maybe one or two. I yeah, the pistol is probably like a one shot deal in thirty five, maybe twenty five. Yeah, but the uh, the carbine that they had though was really nice looking. It's and, extremely light. I yes. mean, it probably four pounds. Maybe it was maybe. really yeah. light. It was. It seriously was. It was. It was a lot of aluminum. Um, <laughs> it had a you know a steel tank, of course, but uh, yeah. Well, I'm excited about getting I mean, those in, and I know that they have already air freighted some some samples because I've got the the artwork for what that rifle is going to look like. Ooh. I've seen some of the the prototype images. Those those samples are already on their way to Pyramid Air, and one of those samples has my name on it. And I believe I'm going to try and go for the 30 cal. Yes, that that would probably be a good. So choice. if I can get a 30 cal on that, that might be it. Might be a lot of fun to yes. take that down the range because it's gosh, it's so light. But it, because the tank unscrews. It's mm -hmm. detachable. That was the point I was trying to get to before. I completely whiffed. But you take the tank off, and now you've got something that can easily fit in a backpack. So you've got like a simple little backpack gun, or throw it, you know, in the back in your truck, or I mean, it's just something that's very transportable, very easy to to take with you and, and yeah, take just, take out hunting or take out on a camping trip. It'd be a really good gun for that. 
Okay. So what do you want to talk about next? You want to talk about Gamo a little bit? Gamo has a lot of really interesting stuff. We did talk a little bit about the Pigman. We did. Um, but also their entry into or re-entry, re-entry into the pre-charged pneumatic right. with the Coyote, which is available in 177, 22, and 25 caliber. Correct. Um, and that is based off a BSA rifle. Because, Called the Buccaneer. Yes, the Buccaneer. Um, and so it's a BSA barrel, BSA all the moving parts, the tank, everything. It's just basically a BSA rifle in a gamo stock. Right. So you're getting BSA quality at a gamo price. Right. And they use a cold hammer forged process. I learned this while I was at shot. Yes. A cold <laughs> hammer forged process. There's four places in the world that can make these barrels, and BSA is one of them. Yeah. And it, they are very accurate barrels. And I know the BSA barrels are good because we have the R10 in. Oh, and if there was one gun I wished I didn't have to send back. Yes. Let's talk so, about the big dog. The Ready? big dog. The bulldog. Yes, it's what the Pyramid Air says. Uh, little bark, lots of bites. We got to look at it. We got to feel it, hold it, you know, talk to one of the engineers um, on how it worked and everything. Um, magazine fed, 357 caliber, bullpup. Um, it's the only real production U.S company bullpup right now um, that I know of in a big bore. Um, yeah, it, it's yeah. the only production We're one. We're going to talk bullpup, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it, it's, it's a not niche. the only U.S. built no. big bore. No, it isn't, but in a bullpup is what I'm saying. Um, so, I mean, it's something somewhat unique to American manufacturers, uh, but uh, you can go through, you know, some of the foreign um, sure. made ones that already are set up, the FX, uh, Daystate, uh, you know, that have 30 calibers that are 30, 35 caliber. Oh, do they have any 35s? I don't know. I, uh, they, I think they have I 30. I haven't seen an FX in a 35. Yeah, so it, it's, it's... Here's the thing. All right. <clears throat> there is a disconnect with some companies. Can I use that? that some companies? Yes, that's a, that's a Between general term. the marketing department and the engineering department. Yes. Okay? So I have seen it on occasion where some companies will market performance on one side or promote or portray performance on one side and the engineering isn't there to facilitate that performance. Yes, this is true. I got several different stories about the performance of the Bulldog. Yes. I want to know which one's going to be right. Right. Because I heard some that said, hey, we're going to give you 200 foot-pounds and we'll do that in ten, with 10 shots. We've got 10 shots of 200 foot-pounds. Yes. And then I got... Another story that was, we're dropping 60 to 70 feet per second extreme spread in the first five shots, and it gets worse from there. Right. I, you know, I just have a hard time reconciling the well, two. It, you the, can't have both. Yeah, the thing is, is it's, it's a non-regulated rifle. Yeah. You are, the only thing that's regulating it is the valve. Yeah. So, um, you know, if it were a regulated rifle, I could see 200 foot-pounds of energy every single shot if you had a big enough reservoir. But unregulated you're gonna have some variation yeah. in there so i mean hey it may may be great I, you um, know if it shoots well i'm gonna be really happy yeah they they, they need i want i want a u.s based manufacturer to do well yes i mean i want that so i'm hopeful and mm-hmm. i'm looking forward to getting one and testing one and if they can maintain 180 foot pounds across even the first magazine i will be tickled oh yes yeah we'll I mean, see it's a five-round magazine, right? Yeah, yeah, five rounds. Dead. So we're talking about ten rounds max. Yeah, two hundred foot-pounds in five rounds. That's in three, five, seven. That's that's a that's, lot of energy. That's man. a lot of energy. That's, but that's just, that would be great. It's like I mean, that's sort of like I don't know. Yeah. Well, we don't have it on our list here, but the one neat thing that they did do is uh, they kind of revamped the thirteen. Uh, oh, 77. they did. They the, did the the, the thirteen hundred series. There, thirteen twenty two, thirteen seventy seven. Yeah, that gun. That gun has been around for decades. It yeah. has been the same gun for decades, and they did a really nice refresh of that. They did a nice job on that. Yeah, they gave it a facelift, and uh, the uh, Armada. Um, the I like that gun. The Armada looks real nice. Yeah, it's a Marauder in a in a. It's again, suit. it's a, it's a mod- Marauder with a lot of extra plastic, yeah. but. They are coming out with a, a less expensive version of it. Not a lot less, but it, it is a, a less expensive, more accessible uh, version of it without the actual branded Magpul furniture. Right. So yeah, for 1000 so. bucks, you get all the Magpul stuff and the scope and the bipod and everything. And for 800 bucks, I did double-check the numbers. Yep. 
at 800 bucks you get a tra- uh, stock standard. I'm trying to get one of those um, from Pyramid Air for testing and extended testing because for like half a air gunners, that look will entice people into air guns. Yes. And that's why I think that has a lot of, it has a legitimate place that, you know, if, if you're going to spend $600 on the gun, $800 for the bipod and the scope and the cool stock, it's not that much of a stretch really. No. So. Yeah. And it, the thing is, is though, it's, the advantage to it is it is based off the Marauder platform. So just like the QB 78s, it's been around for yeah. a little while. So the, there are there is a aftermarket, so you can a lot fix of support. it up all a lot you of support want. A lot of support. Right. So um, and even you know B and M Customs even has some stuff for that. So. Great. Well, um, so my Shot Show picks um, has to be number one. I mean, we we met before Shot Show the day before, and the 257. I'm really excited about that. Okay. The Mac 257. That's it's going to be real accurate. And, and from what I've seen, it's 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 a really nice rifle. Um, and then outside of that, the Gletcher guns. Um, you really like those the replicas. Gletcher, they they're just beautiful replicas, one to one. All their all their replicas, though. I mean, yeah. the the Russian Legends line, the um, even their airsofts and stuff. They, um, they have really nice, really nice stuff. Yes. you could tell it was quality. They really had a uh, dedication to the quality of it. Exactly. They they want a true replica. They want a true to the feel and everything and the actions and everything. They're great guns. Okay. Um, the big boar carnivore, um, from hot son, uh, that's like those. Yeah. It, the, the, <clears throat> they're repeaters. They're a reasonable price point. Yep. And they perform what they say they're going to perform. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's they, no, it, there's no, there's no, you know, Oh, it'll go 500 miles <laughs> and it only goes two miles. It's, no. they tell you exactly what it's going to do with, the ammo that you're going to use with it. Here, we had a comment in the chat room about the Hudson guns and the fact that they actually meet their advertised speeds or barely under. Well, you should have you should have been in the truck with me as I was driving on to an errand. I had to run around town and I get a call from the president of Hudson because I was in the process of going through and proving these guns out. And he's you know we're having this discussion slash argument about <laughs> about what to put in the catalog. I said, look, man, you better to under promise and over deliver yes than to over promise and under deliver because right. everybody over promises and then under delivers and then just expects the consumer to just take it yeah and so when we were going through these things and he sent me the prototypes to go through and prove them you know make my recommendations on what to do uh, moving forward with them and th- that was you know it's a real honor to be taken that seriously and, and somebody really trust you with their you know, that new product. And, and I know you were part of helping us test the 30 cal. And, um, but we went out and, and did the 30 and the 35 and went through and, you know, it shoots a really hard, consistent 90, 95 foot pounds. Yes. And from what I understand, the production ones are going to do a little better than that. Well, and that's it, can, awesome. it can do it across 12 shots. I mean, the extreme spread across 12 shots was like less than 30 feet per second. Yeah. With, a shooting how how heavy are those 80.81.02 grain i mean yeah that that's a big old heavy hunk of lead flying at you there go ahead sue if you had one brake barrel for raccoon hunting what would it be and why it's a good question hot time 125 25 cal yep that'd be what i'd pick yep yep and why um very consistent accurate and it has enough power um kind of a rule of thumb and i'm kind of going around about how to deal with this because i get people what can I hunt with my gun? I have people trying to shoot a, you know, a, uh, a Crossman multi-pump to kill a raccoon. Uh, it just, that's the wrong gun to yeah. use. Can it do it? Yes. Well, yeah. Should you, you do it? No. no. Um, really, you need, for like a raccoon, you need 20, 25 foot pounds and on target, not at the yes. muzzle, on target. And the 125 will do about 30 foot pounds and 25 cal. Mm-hmm. So you have plenty of power out to 25, 30 yards, and it's accurate enough to actually put it where you want at that range. So that would be the gun I would pick. Yes, and it's a rugged rifle, too. It's not one that you're going to be afraid of bumping against a tree and it breaking. If, if I wanted to spend a lot of money and do that, then I would get the RWS 460, which is a far more refined rifle and a nicer shooting rifle, but it's $600, too. Yeah. So, so yeah, for you know, 200 bucks you can get the hot on. Yeah, bumping around out in Ish. the dark. You know, yeah. raccoon hunting. Yeah. So that's it for me. You got anything else? No, nope, I think we're pretty much done with this show. Now meet us here at eagle-radio.com for air power, and we'll be back March 15th. Thanks, you guys, for listening.